So you've generated your content with ChatGPT. Now it's time to properly format and optimize your blog posts to increase the likeliness of ranking on the first page of Google. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to go from a poorly formatted blog post to a well-formatted, organized, and engaging SEO optimized blog post that will rank on Google. So let's go ahead and get started. A big mistake that I see a lot of people making when using AI to write content is that they will tell the AI to write the content and just copy and paste that and hope that that content will rank on Google. But that's not how SEO works. You need to first have good prompts to be able to get better outputs and that will allow you to get much more well formatted content. So for example, I asked ChatGPT to write me an article on what are the best ways to use AI to increase productivity in online businesses. And this was the output that I was able to get back. As you can see here, it's not very formatted at all. There's no H1s, there's no H2s. It's just a blob of uh, paragraph content. And as you can see, it's also very short. I think it's about less than 800 words. So this would not be a very good article um, to post on your website. It's very thin, it's not very well formatted, and this will definitely not rank on Google. Now, on the other hand, I prompted the AI by telling it that it's an expert blog post writer specializing in writing SEO optimized content. And the prompt that I used to generate the outline told the AI that we're trying to rank for the target keyword, which is also the topic of the blog post. So include the target keyword and variations of that keyword in the H1, H2, H3, and throughout the article. So this prompt allows the AI to include that target keyword in the H1, H2, and H3. And we've also told it to write in markdown format. So markdown format will automatically um, format the titles, the H1s, and the H2s so that it's a, a much more well-organized and properly formatted um, blog post. So once I've generated the outline, I then used another prompt to tell it to um, make sure that it's including the target keywords um, in the H1s and also include variations of the keyword, um, which we're going after naturally throughout the full article and include a table of contents. And as you can see, this is the article in which we get back. And again, it's in markdown format. So this means that um, when you convert this content, you it will already have the H1s and the H2s um, in the actual title. So this is the full article. And once I've went ahead and um, converted that mark down to HTML, this is what it looks like. We have the title, we have the H1s here, which is understanding AI and its potential. Um, I believe this was also an H1, and this may be H2 or an H3. But as you can see, this is a much, much better, well-formatted piece of content that will rank on Google because when Google is reading your blog posts, they will read your H1s and your H2s to understand what your content is about. So if it's not well formatted, Google will not know what that content is about. But because in this example, our H1 is also our target keywords, then Google will know that this blog post is about harnessing the power of AI. So it will rank you for that keyword and the variations of that keyword. So once you've converted the content from um, ChatGPT into HTML, now what we want to do is paste that onto our website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it into the back end of our website. And as you can see, again, we're already on the right track because our content has already um, been well formatted. This is our H1, H2s, and so on. But you can't just finish there because there's still uh, further optimizations which you need to do, especially if you're in a competitive space and you wanna increase the likeness of ranking this blog post on Google. So the first thing that you need to do is go through your H1, um, H2 tags and make sure everything makes sense. So this is an H2 tag here. Um, and it's just an intro tag, so you can actually go ahead and remove that. I usually um, like to remove that so it's not kind of repetitive. And this is going to be your H2 tags, which is understanding AI and its potential. Then you have your H2 again, which is how AI can improve productivity. So this looks pretty good, but what I like to do is usually include the target keyword within our H2s. So for example, um, this blog post is about harnessing the power of AI to boost productivity in online businesses. So understanding AI and its potential is the first H2, but if I wanna make this a little bit more relevant and include those target keywords, I can change this around and improve this by adding to boost productivity in online businesses. So I've went ahead and added the target keyword into this H2 and it makes sense understanding AI and its potential to boost productivity in online businesses. So how AI can improve productivity in online businesses, this one is pretty good. So I can keep that as is. This is an H3, which is automating routine tasks with AI. I can change this and add in your online business with AI. So the full um, H3 would be automating routine tasks in your online business with AI or using AI, whatever you like to add here. AI in data analysis and decision-making in online businesses. Again, if I just wanna make this very specific to 
um, the target keyword and the blog post topic which I'm writing about. Customer service enhancements with AI, online business customer service enhancements. Again, I can add that in there. Now here's another H2, best practices for implementing AI in online businesses. I think this one is pretty good, so you can probably keep that as is. And then you have some case studies, future of AI in online businesses. Let's scroll down. Case studies, successful use of AI to increase productivity in online businesses. This is pretty good. So I'm cool with that. Future of AI in online businesses and a conclusion. So overall, we've went ahead and kind of optimized our H1s and our H2s to include more of that target keyword. So that again allows us to rank for the keyword in which we're going after and variations of that keyword. Now, another major, major um, thing that you need to keep in mind when you're optimizing your blog post is to include a optimized title and meta description. If you're unfamiliar with what your title or your meta description is, essentially this is what people will see when they search up or they find your content on Google. So right now it's just going to be um, the generic um, title of our website. So we need to go ahead and include a SEO optimized title and meta description. So we can go ahead and use um, ChatGPT and tell it to create an SEO optimized title and meta description using the target keyword for this blog post. So we have the title here, unleashing the AI power, top strategies to boost productivity in online businesses. Let's go ahead and copy that over. And we're gonna paste this into the title. So we're gonna remove all of the presets and we're gonna paste that in there. Now we're going to do the same thing for the meta description. Again, we're gonna copy that over, paste this. And we also need to upgrade our slug. This is going to be the URL. So www.wordrocket.ai slash um, the title or the keyword in which we're going after. So for the slug or the URL, we can do something like using AI to boost productivity in businesses or using AI to boost business productivity. As you can see, Yoast is telling us that this um, title is a little bit too long. So you can actually go ahead and reduce this. So for example, if we remove strategies, we can just um, have unleashing AI power, boost productivity in online businesses. As you can see, it's in the green. So if you wanted to, you can test this around to see if a shorter title will um, help you to rank higher. But I find that if it's a little bit longer, um, it hasn't really affected my rankings, especially if you do all the work to optimize your content and create very in-depth articles and increase the domain authority um, of your website. So let's go ahead and save the draft. Let's take a look to see what the article looks like. So harnessing the power of AI to boost productivity in online businesses, we have the table of contents here. I'll probably go ahead and add a space in between. And then we have the intro and then we have the first H1s. I think this is actually the H2s and um, so on. Then we have the bolded content and so on. So it's looking pretty good. Um, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and add in a engaging piece of content within um, this blog post to increase the likeness of ranking on Google. So for the most part, I usually go ahead and add a video and I have the luxury of adding in my own videos because usually what I do for this website is I turn my YouTube content into um, articles so I can just go ahead and link out to my videos and this does really, really well. But if you don't have a YouTube channel or you don't want to link to any videos, what you can simply do is tell the AI to create a chart or a table um, specific for this um, blog post topic. So what I told it to, I told it to create a table for this blog post in Markdown. So what it'll do is it'll create a engaging table. And then what you have to do is go ahead and convert that into HTML. As you can see, you have a nice table here. We can go ahead and copy this over, head back over to our content here, and we can paste this in wherever we think makes sense for this article. Okay, so harnessing the power of AI, boom, 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 we have the article. And if we scroll down here, as you can see, we have a nice table. So the table makes things a little bit um, more engaging for users, and it can allow you to be able to um, get more visitors and also rank a little bit quicker because your content is not going to be considered thin. It's going to be considered to be very in-depth because you've went ahead and created a table or maybe you have some data. So I highly recommend that you include some engaging piece of content. It can be images, it can be videos, it can be um, charts or tables um, because I find that this will allow you to be able to rank a little bit quicker and also get some more traffic to your blog post and also differentiate your blog post from all of the other blog posts for that specific topic. So now it's time to add some images into your blog posts. And there's a couple of ways in which you can do so. You can get some free images from Unsplash or you can use a website like Deposit Photos. So most of you already know um, about um, Unsplash. So all you have to do is go ahead and add in your keywords in which you're trying to look for. And if you find an image that you like, you can go ahead and download that image and you can use that image within your articles. Deposit Photos is another really, really good website in which you can get some high quality stock images for your blog posts or your articles, but it's more of a paid website compared to Unsplash. 
So if you wanted to pay for a plan, then you would get X amount of credits and he used those credits to download images for your blog post. They did have a lifetime deal, but it's not available right now. If it comes back, I'll be sure to let you guys know. So that's what you can do to simply get images. You can use Unsplash, you can use deposit photos, or if you're good at using um, AI text images, you can also use an AI text image to create your own photos for your blog post. So if I wanted to, I can add um, some media. I can upload my file here. Let's go ahead and select the image in which we just downloaded. And when you're uploading your image, you always want to go ahead and add in alt text. So this is going to be AI business productivity. So you want to go ahead and add your alt text. So it describes that image and um, Google knows what that image is about. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. Boom, boom, boom. So it's there. We can go ahead and increase that image if we want or decrease it, whatever you like to do. Save that. The image is going to be in there. We can save it as a draft and see what it looks like in our article. OK, so this is the image. And again, you can go ahead and um, remove that, put it wherever you like and increase the size or decrease the size as you like. And when you're publishing your blog post, you want to make sure that you have the right categories for that specific blog post. So, for example, let's say I wanted to add a new category. I can add a category for productivity using AI or something um, that's more relevant for this blog post, or I can use any of the preset um, categories that I have. Also, if you scroll down, you can add a featured image. So let's go ahead and upload an image here and we'll use that as a featured image. OK, so again, make sure that you're always updating your alt tag. Now let's go ahead and set the featured image. So that's set. Now we can go ahead and publish this blog post. As you can see, we have an AI SEO score of 80 out of 100. Readability is pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Um, I don't think that we need to overly optimize um, the content because, again, we don't even know if this blog post will rank by Google because Google has so many different factors. but we can be happy and know that we've went ahead and done our best to make sure that the, we've optimized, we've properly formatted this article. So we've done our part. Now it's just kind of up to Google to whether or not they will rank this blog post. But you can be very confident with posting this because you've done all of the best SEO practices. You've updated your H1s, your H2s, you've included images. You've also included a table and you've included an SEO optimized title and made a description. So that's how you would go about properly formatting and optimizing your blog posts before posting it onto your website. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope that you learned something new. If you did, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.